Okay, you don't have to look back very far through my video history or, you know, see the collection of gear I've got in this room to know that I am quite an idiot when it comes to buying gear. And even myself, I would think more than once, twice or more before spending any money on this Klon Centaur pedal. It's reached ridiculous levels of price. Um, now, you could make a personal decision that it's a good investment. It may well be. Who knows? It could double in price again, maybe more. But on the other hand, if you watch the rest of this video, you'll probably figure out you don't need to spend any more than two or maybe 300 pounds at the most if you actually want to get this sound in your rig. Now, I was lucky enough to get uh, Ainsley Lister over the other day. He's a great pro musician, um, actually about to release his 14th studio album in a few months' time. Um, and it was lovely spending a, a day or two with him. And uh, apart from the video we did about the 59 and 57 Les Pauls, which I'm still releasing some content from that, um, I managed to spend some time with his Clon Centaur. Now, a quick background on that. He bought this when it was about 300 quid. I think he said it was about 12 or 13 years ago. Um, he said he took it out. He's not really a pedal person. Uh, and that's something I want to talk about in another video. Some things I've learned from being around Ainsley and, and the way he sets up gear. But he's not really a pedal person. And he said he... You know, took it home, opened it up, played it, and decided it really probably wasn't something he needed. It wasn't for him, and it's been basically in a box, in a drawer, for most of that time. So I asked him if he'd bring it along, and I've got a load of clone, clone pedals. So those are pedals that people have made to try and sound as similar as possible to the real thing. Now, I've got a bunch of them here, and we're, we're going to go through some demos that Ainsley did with it, so I hope you enjoy that. He um, is playing my Mac Mull S Classic Strat. We're going through a Two Rock Classic Reverb signature. Um, and, you know, we're just trying to... We kept the clon on the same settings throughout the whole video. And in each case, you'll hear a bit of the clon first and then a bit of the other pedal. Um, I think it's worth watching all of this. I'll keep in a little bit of uh, sort of talking that we did throughout. Um, so if you're interested in buying a clon Centaur, have a look at this first if it's for playing. If it's for an investment, that's a completely different thing and you'd have to make your own mind up about it. Personally, as far as buying it to play it, despite my propensity to spend way too much money on gear that I don't need, I wouldn't personally go for it. I'm going to put at the end of this video a clip of me playing it, which will show you that even very expensive gear still won't make you sound good if um, you set it up wrong or if you're not playing something that sounds good by itself. So, yeah, let's get into this.
recorded that because you didn't tell me. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like scrabbling around, so just, right, okay. you haven't dialed this one in. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. What the hell? Hang on. Oh, that's tone. <laughs> thought it was a bit bright. Well, hang on, so which is it? Oh, my glasses. I can't read it. Wait. What's what on there? Output, right, okay. Yeah. So it'd been about 1990 I started gigging, and it was Boss Pedals and Dodd and a couple of Ibanez ones, and that was it. And if anybody had pedals, they just had a you know four or five Boss pedals, and that was it. Whereas now it's like it's kind of stupid. <laughs> right, come on, what's like? Be the Clon and the Centura pedal. Yeah. Cool. So first of all, I'll play the Clon. Yeah. to now unplug the plug. You do. So I haven't tried playing it either. I'll we'll give it a go. But the only thing is, are you sure that this is um, the wrong way around with its polarity? I think it's, I think they've probably done it to be as accurate as possible. Yeah. <laughs> I know, why? Okay, at this point, the Centura made by Cherryatone is the one that most mimics the Clon Centaur in terms of the look the way it's presented, you know, the dials, everything, including the fact that you need to adapt your power to fit into the different type of socket in the back of the Centura, as well as the fact that the pedal itself comes with the paperwork like the original Clon Centaur did. It was like a handwritten piece of paper with some settings on and some advice about power and things like that, which I'll just, I've been, you know, fascinated by the fact that Cherry Atone really want to give you that full experience, um, which I think is pretty cool, actually. Um, but yeah, let's hear what it sounds like. One of my mates, um, he had one of the silver ones, same as that. Yeah. And um, his guitar tech basically plugged it in wrong when he wasn't around and yeah. fried it. And oh. his guitar, he didn't want to tell him, so he basically his guitar tech had to go and buy one. And he found one on eBay, it cost him 1500 quid. This was a couple of years ago. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And uh, it was like, well, is that? I said, did you ever tell him that you'd absolutely had to pay out? 1500 quid of your own money because you mistakenly brought his clone. He's like, he said, I did tell him eventually. <laughs> but, okay, right. Okay, so this is the center. <laughs> Pamphlet that this one would need a higher level on the dial than it would look like on the real one. 
interesting. High level. What on as the... in as in to make it the same volume, it would look like a poor volume on this one. What on, on the level there? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, so it should be a bit higher, probably. Good. Who knows? No, right. I can't remember what I played, but I'll have a go. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> After trying out all the Klong clones, we thought it would be cool just to have a different, a t entirely different overdrive pedal to use in a similar way, so with low gain and high volume, just to see, you know, what does that do anyway, you know, as a control test. So this is the Bemuram Shanks, one of my favorite pedals, with no gain in there really, and all volume, just to see if it pushes the amp the same way, and therefore using a Klon as a clean boost is really just the same as using other pedals as a clean boost. Um, let's hear what it sounds like. Okay, I'm gonna paraphrase Ainsley himself here, basically, uh, after he finished playing all the demos. As a non-pedal guy himself, he basically sat there and said, it doesn't really make any difference, does it? Um, and I get, I totally get his opinion, even though I'm someone who loves pedals and makes lots of videos about pedals, I do sometimes sit here whilst I'm doing it thinking, we can all play without these things. Uh, would it be as much fun? Maybe not, and maybe that's why we all love them. But in terms of actually sculpting your sound, there's very little you need. I sat, we sat here and reflected for a while and looked at my ridiculous shelf loads of pedals that I've used on this channel. I mean, I could have a really nice 60s strap for all of that. I could have three more fantastic top level amps. That's gonna lead into another video I'm gonna do um, about how to set up my amp uh, as basically as if it were a pedal, if that makes sense. But Look, I would never spend five grand on this Klon Centaur after playing with it and hearing it. And just after this at the end, you're going to hear me playing it for a minute or two. Um, it was fiddly to set up. It didn't sound good in all positions. In fact, you could make it sound terrible. Um, and uh, yeah, it would just be a really crazy use of my money when I could spend that on, um, yeah, like a hundred guitar lessons or... Uh, you know, flying around the world to see people play or, you know, another Gibson custom shop guitar or <laughs> putting towards, um, you know, half the price of a vintage strap, whatever. Uh, I personally wouldn't spend the money on it. I'd be an idiot to, I think it's up to you yourself. If you're doing it for the sound, get, the, get a clone. All of these clones were just as good. That, some of them had slightly different qualities, like the Clon Centaur itself, had this syrupiness to it. It was like dripping honey on your tone in a, you know, but actually that doesn't, it's not always what you want. It's very smooth. It can be quite smooth sounding. I like a bit of more energy energy in my sound and some of the pedals were better or worse for that. Um, but ultimately I'd be happy if I only had one of these Klong clone pedals. Which one would I go for? I think that's for another video uh, if we ever need to make another Klon Centaur video. But look, I hope you enjoyed this um, set of demos. This um, You can tell that uh, 
basically all the clone guys have got it pretty well sorted. Uh, and so thanks to them, we can all save a hell of a lot of money. Um, all right, thanks for watching. Cheers. I could probably make a separate video about this, but you're about to hear me just play the two Rock Classic Reverb and then two settings on the Klon. Now the amp is set up the same way as Ainsley set it up, and the Klon is used in um, one of the settings that he used, basically. And um, if ever an example of tone is in the fingers is evident, then it's, it's here. With me playing, it's much more muffled sounding, darker. Um, you can't even necessarily tell I'm using the Klon pedal, maybe just any overdrive or boost pedal. It sounds a bit harsh. Now, to be fair to me, it was 7.30 in the morning before coffee after a bit of a late night um, with some, yeah, with some good food and wine the night before. And maybe I wasn't ready to play. <laughs> and also, I'd never used the Klon pedal before this moment. It's not my guitar, it's Ainsley's guitar. But all of those excuses out of the way, one thing I want to take from my time with Ainsley is dynamics. How to use dynamics is super important. How to use your volume control more. I thought I used it a lot, but he plays most of the time quite far down there um, and rings the most out of it all as you know as possible. I think I should make another video a little bit about my experiences with that. And um, but yeah, just you can listen to this. Yeah, you can probably hear for yourself in the clip that's coming up what the difference is. And I just wanted to add, uh, if any of you get to this point in the video, the Centaur pedal did sound really, really good in the room. Um, they, all the pedals sounded really good in the room, but probably none of them in the setting that Ainsley set and the way he played it, probably it did sound a very tiny bit better than all the rest. There's some richness to it and the harmonics and the, the furry edge that I like uh, just stuck out to me a little bit more with that pedal. But um, yeah, anyway, cheers. <laughs> Thank you. 